Hey, Reika! Are you listening to me? Feeling the top of her face, Reika turned at her, lightly colored eyes to the man. When she tried to stand up, she found that something was preventing her from doing so. Her ankles were tied with a cord. What? What is this? Reika posed a question to Hyoma, the man she had been living with. Hyoma looked down on her with cold eyes, once that she had never met with him before. Yes, these eyes. Reika knew them. These were the eyes of one who would use violence. They were eyes that regarded the one before them as being a worthless existence. But why this? All of a sudden. Even though she loved him. Even though she still loved him. It won't work unless I reenact it. His soft voice, unexpectedly, made Reika felt as thought her entire body froze. Re intact? Yes. Reintacting the scene of the crime. I'm afraid that's why what is needed to summon him. I need to cut the woman like you to pieces using his knives. What? In order to withstand violence, you simply need to force your heart into the state of temporal death. That was what she had always done, and what she had planned to do this time as well. However, Hyoma just said that he would cut her to the pieces. What was that supposed to be mean? What was the meaning in cutting her to pieces? Alright, magic circle complete. The stench of blood, which any resident of Shinjuku would be used to smelling, made Reika's heart pound as she faced death. Not noticing the change in Reika, Hyoma raised his right hand, which he had strange tattoo, and began to chant strange words. Feel, 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 feel. Let it be turned over five times. Simply breaking asunder the fulfilled time. It's like spell, thought Reika. In spite of lack of any partic particularly disturbing content, a scream began to rise inside Reika. Let the silver and steel be the essence. Let stone and the archduke of contracts be the foundation. Let my great master be the ancestor. Rise the wall against the wind that shall fall. Close the four cardinal gates. Come out from the crown. Rotate the three-branched road reaching the kingdom. Hyoma took up knife in his hand. Please don't. Her sense of foreboding turning into conviction. Reika spoke with the shaking voice as she took her head. Hyoma did not reply. The tip, tip of knife traced Reika's body, a thought lost. However, he was not hesitating but deciding where to strike. It would be meaningless to finish her off with a single blow. He had to reintact those brutal killings, so he needed to slaughter her in the most painful way possible. Finally, Hyoma decided where to stop. I shall declare here. Your body shall serve under me. My fate shall be with your sword. Submit to the beckoning of the Holy Grail. If you will submit to this will and this reason, then answer! Hyoma shouted and raised the knife up high. Reika's right arm sent her a shock. Huh? A second late, the pain assaulted her and Reika screamed. An enormous heat scorched her body, centered on the knife that stabbed into her. It hurts! It hurts! All the times when she had been beaten before there was nothing compared to this intense pain. An oath shall be sworn here! Another knife stabbed her in the abdomen this time. Ah! There was no shock unlike at first, but the pain multiplied. Reika, feeling her life flowing away from her, screamed words, ones that she had never thought of her entire life, overwhelmed her. I shall attain all virtues of all the heaven. I shall have the dominion over all evils of all of hell. He aimed her and stabbed upper left shoulder. At last, the voice that she screamed for him to stop uh, could no longer make a sound. For seventh heaven, attend of all three great words of power, 
come far from the ring of restraint, protector of balance. A knife hovered above her head. In the instant, she understood that she will die. Fear exploded in her, coursing through all her entire body. No, I don't want this. She never wanted to die like this, in such wanton cruelty, in such despair. How many seconds on reprieve did she have until the knife was swung down? Must she accept her death within the span of ten seconds? No! I will never want that! I don't want to die! I don't... No, 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 no! As such, Reka went beyond her own limit. A knife has been drived through her right palm into the concrete floor. She grasped the blade and pierced her hand. Gathering all her strength in her body, she pulled it out and thrust into Hyoma's face. Having been enduring the pain of the spell, he stopped the incantation and screamed as pain suddenly assaulted him from the outside. Et! Spewing out of the sounds that no longer formed into words, Reika brandished the knife again. Hyoma glared at her with hate and let off strong kick at the pit of her stomach. Unlike the pain of having a knife sticking into her, this was a shock that suspended her vital activities. Reika tumbled to the edge of the magic circle. She was, like anything, vividly conscious, perhaps due to the intense pain. There was no change in magic circle, it still not even glow. Does it have to be five people dead? Or do I have to go and kill Tyrantin? Shit, this is such pain! He almost stamped his feet as he tore at his hair. Blood spilled from Reika's mouth as she watched. <coughs> Her heart continued to operate, accelerating in order to allow the existence called Ricodo Reika to live on. However, the pain had long ago branched the limit permissible by humans. Little by little, she knew that her bodily senses were being lost. However, she could not feel any relief from the fact that she will no longer suffer. Reika's life was flowing out of her with every second. She didn't know why she had lived. She didn't know why she was allowed to live. Crushing down the doubts she had been for many years, she gave for a single answer. I want to live. She simply wanted to live on. She did not want to die. She did not want to die in such pain. Having despaired at life, she embraced the first craving she had been ever had since she faced death. She wanted to live because she wanted to. She didn't want to die because she didn't want to. That was simply, and nothing else. Yes, it was simple, clear through it was. I don't want to die. A single drop dripped onto the magic circle. In the next instant, an incredible tempest swept out from the center of the circle. Hyoma could sense it. It was outrageous swirl of prana, journeying through the obstacles, and an uncommon monster will make it advent into the reality. Is this? Did I do it? The voice of the Magus shook with joy. You want to live, right? It was the lovely and very clear voice of young girl. That voice spoke, not to Hyoma, but to Reika alone. Without the slightest hesitation, Reika replied to the voice. I want to live. Reika made her wish. She clung out to it with desperation. The girl whispered with a sweet, ringing voice. Okay, we understand. Let us make our contract, mother. The cer magic circle activated and Prana accompanied by the first crimson light was released. Reika was captivated by this fantastical scene before her and Hyoma, unlike before, expressed his delight and with a serious response. Did it work? I did it! All right! I did it! The clear voice of the girl reached Hyoma as he danced around. Question. Are you the one who called for us? Hyoma was dumbfounded by the voice which was so far beyond his expectations. After all, he had been extremely sure that the most cruel murder of all couldn't possibly be a young girl. What? How? Do I did something wrong? Hyoma was bewildered by the girl that came out of the circle. Her silver hair was dense and rather short, and her pale, icy blue eyes gazed at the Magus 
disintegrously. The girl shook her head and declared, No! There is no mistake! You summoned us! We are what you sought! So that means you are... Yes! What you had attended to summon was a servant assassin. Our true name is... Jack the Reaper.